Hey, y'all, friends, and welcome back to another episode of the Second Swing Thoughts podcast. And uh, it's an exciting time because there are new products here in 2024. So um, joining today is Tyler Fitzel, master club fitter here at Second Swing, um, one of the you know biggest club junkies here in the company. So I would say so. Yeah, I, I would agree. Yeah. Um, but we had we had to get your thoughts on the new products today. So, um, yeah. you know, we're going to we're going to kind of run through each, you know, of the big big brands, kind of go through what they've what they've released so far in 2024. And there's more to come as well um, mm -hmm. throughout earlier this year, but also later in the year. Um, obviously, always in the summer, we get something from Titleist at some point. So there's something there's that to look forward to as well. But um, Tyler, first of all, first impressions on everything new 2024. What um, is there anything immediately that jumps out at you before we dive in? Yeah, I think when we talk about technology, what we've seen from a lot of the companies is they're they're really talking a lot about what they're going to be able to do differently than before. Because you think about like in the driver world right now, everyone's always talking about getting a longer and straighter. The thing is like there's a certain amount of technology that you have to work around in order for the club to be legal, right? So if you think about a driver in terms of forgiveness, it's not, it's not just side to side forgiveness, it's also up and down forgiveness. So there's this, this word called 10K, we see 10,000, we see, uh, yep. TaylorMade's got the new QI10 mm -hmm. Max, which stands for uh, Quest for Inertia, yeah. 10,000. We see uh, Ping has got a new G430 Max version in the 10K or mm -hmm. 10,000. Um, what they're looking at is trying to make the driver as straight, but also as far as they can um, get it. And you'd think that that combination is like, should be super easy to get. Why can't you get something to go straighter and farther? Part of it has to do with the legalities in it, but the other thing has to do with, like those two forces are kind of opposing to it. Like you can make something go a lot straighter or you can make something go a lot farther, but it's hard to get them to do both. Mm -hmm. And so you kind of still have by all of these companies, a lot of the technologies, you're seeing different models, again, going after different players. Some players are gonna need a lot more low spin. Some players are gonna need more spin. Some players just kind of want this combination of going a lot straighter. Mm -hmm. So the technology, and I've always said technology is based on materials and application. And it just, it never, um, it never stops for the engineering departments. They're, they're constantly working on new ways of improving what they've got. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think there's always, it's always fascinating to hear what the different, you know, engineering teams or companies are doing. There's different strategies, like the way the ways they go about it. There's different chassis we see every year. Um, you know, they might be moving some weight around. Um, I know, like for the longest time, I think back to Callaway's jailbreak internal structure. Yep. That was a huge. You know, that was very successful for them for a while. So uh, we hear all of these different ways, and there and these teams are always trying to come up with whatever that next step is to improving their product. Um, so. I wanted to start with Ping, and I mostly wanted to do that because we actually got a chance to go down there. Um, I got to get uh, get the session in with James Lee, mm -hmm. um, a fitter down there at Ping, uh, to test out the new Blueprint irons and the 10K. And yeah. so, um, first of all, the, the G430 Max 10K, um, it kind of lives up to what you were talking about. Straight yep. tee shots. And I, I what I was impressed by is it doesn't sacrifice any of the ball speed that nope. you would maybe think initially of that you might give up in a quote unquote 10k driver that's typically you hear that and you, you think forgiveness high launch maybe not the low spin but the, the speed is still very much there with the 10k yeah and that's one of the things that uh like i mentioned the idea of trying to combine this forgiveness with um some of the distance to it is you have to maintain that ball speed a lot of that ball speed gets maintained in its face structure the materials you're using the overall structure and making it um bigger so for instance, the, the new G40, uh, G430 uh, uh, 10K, the Max 10K, is it's longer yep. to accommodate that, that um, uh, inertia in terms of rotation, but it is also much thinner in the face line. So it doesn't have as tall a face. And if you think about it in that regard, the aerodynamics works in a couple of different ways. So not only is it longer, but it's also you know, a little bit thinner or mm -hmm. the face is a little bit more streamlined. Um, so you're moving the air around it differently, even though the size is still 460 cubic centimeters. Right. Um, 
but what it allows what it allows the uh, the manufacturers like Ping to do is to maintain that ball speed, but then also add the le level of forgiveness. And so uh, that's the one thing that that if we talk about numbers from a fitting perspective, ball speed, launch, and spin are the three most important numbers. Right. Right. The next thing that happens to a golf ball when we play is direction. So we're always looking for the the amount of ball speed we can get. And that's not necessarily on the sweet spot. So every driver has a sweet spot, but you're seeing more ball speed around the sweet spot. Mm -hmm. And that's really the trick to the, the um, uh, gaining both in distance and forgiveness. Right. Yeah. yeah, that's the, that's the I think that's almost in, the, in terms of where my world is and, and sort of the marketing aspect of these new releases is that has shifted. It's yeah. now, it's not all about the ball speed, which has been, the conversation it seems like the last five years almost and with new drivers is yeah. we have more ball speed. We have more ball speed. This driver has the most ball speed. Um, I think now, thanks to in some part the limit on you know COR and, and actually how fast you know the, the smash factor and things like that. But now it's about the performance outside of the center of the face. Um, yeah. And I think I like the 10K because I think it's going to fit in well because I think Ping also maybe recognized that a lot of golfers are maybe not taking advantage of a sliding weight in the back. Mm -hmm. And so they said, all right, well, we're gonna make a mile lot. Just here's all the forgiveness you want. Put the stationary weight in the back because you might not be messing with it anyway. There's still some adjustability there with the hosel, but we're gonna give you a stable driver, hits high straight drives. And there's a lot of golfers out there that might want something like that. Yeah, and the, the other thing that they did structurally with that is they took and they put a carbon fiber top. Yep. There's a carbon fiber piece. That's what saved the amount of weight that allowed them to put um, a heavier weight in the backs, mm -hmm. a, a back as a fixed weight. Um, that also changes the, um, when you have weights that are movable, that changes aerodynamics. And so that slipstream that's coming off the back of the skirt or around the sides or whether it's underneath, those are all places that, that turbulence can be created. Mm -hmm. And so they also wanted to make something that swings fast or faster through the air. Right. So the one thing about, we look at technology in terms of legal limits, there's no legal limit to aerodynamics on a club. It's the one thing that if you really dig into the marketing beyond everyone talking about weight, face, and then aerodynamics. Mm -hmm. And w there's not just in ping, but we'll see that as we discuss another company that is also changed a little bit in aerodynamics. Sure, sure. And then I did also want to ask you about um, like where the 10K might fit in in comparison to G430 Max, SFT. Like when you're in the fitting bay and someone's like, I got to get a, a ping driver. I've loved yeah. ping drivers. They're always best performing for me. How are you going to then introduce the 10K into that conversation with the entire G430 series, knowing what you know about it? Yeah, uh, in, and I've already been able, that's the, the really neat part is like, we've got the equipment, we're fitting the equipment. Yep. We haven't even hit the PGA show yet. Mm -hmm. and that That's a little bit of a, a, a difference in the way that things have worked with the major companies now. But I've, I've already had uh, customers come in, hit it. The conversation kind of first starts with, what are we doing? And what would we like to do? Mm -hmm. And so if we're talking about trying to get something that is a little bit straighter, we can look at like the 10K versus do we really need a lot of shot correction or shape correction? Do we talk about an SF tech mm -hmm. or do we really need to reduce a lot of spin? Um, it really is dependent upon the person in the swing. Right. Yeah. And what where where I think the companies have all gone to having models that uh, are going to allow us as fitters and allow the customers to really hone in on what they need for their game. Yep. Ping has done a great job. Not only do they have four models between low spin, um, straight flight, the Max, and now the 10K Max, they also have a high launch series, mm -hmm. which is uh, lighter weight shafts, yep. grips, and, and a lighter weight. So they're taking the same exact head, but they can reduce some of that weight. And so all of a sudden, now there's eight different drivers yep. on the market. Mm -hmm. And we've started to see some of that lighter weight really pay off in, in both distance and forgiveness options for people, um, that, that it fits a segment. And so uh, that's where I think it's a huge advantage being able to, to, to look at four different models that are really 
um, two different models for each one. Yeah, and, you know for sure. Yeah. yeah, I will vouch for the G430 HL driver. My wife got fit into that last year, and huge, huge difference off yeah. the team. Now, granted, she was playing a really old like Nike box set driver, but still, it's like yeah, it's, it's night and day difference. So um, there's really big differences made there. So um, I think the 10K is going to be a great addition to the Ping huge. driver series. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Got to talk about the irons now. So this is, yeah. you know, a different conversation for sure because, you know, again, not that the 10K can't be played by sort of these skilled players. I even saw, I think they were saying oh. Cam Champ was going to be playing that. But yeah. the blueprint irons, the S and the T, definitely geared towards more of a skilled, um, maybe like a lower handicap player. Um, but my first impressions were just, were, I mean, I loved both of them. Um, really, really good feel on both of them. I think they improved that on maybe past blade style or, or player's cavity irons. Uh, granted, they're for, the, both irons are forged um, in the construction, but I, I love that also when you, at least for in my experience when I was hitting both of them, I didn't see, I saw barely a difference in how they looked at a dress. Yep. And I think that's gonna be huge for the combo set possibilities because they are both the same lofts standard across the board. Um, so I think there's, you know, they're, they're kind of jumping in sort of head first into the combo set um, sort of trend that's taking over golf. And I think those two irons are going to be really good for that. Yeah, the, the and, and it's really that idea of the combo set, or I call it progressive, mm -hmm. right? So um, an elite level player, a tour player, um, a very um, a low handicap, maybe just recreational player, uh, down to someone who is just getting into the game can always benefit by having each club more specifically tuned to what they're doing. Yeah. So what Ping has really done, and they've done this slightly before, but they've done it within a model. So for instance, they may have said, well, our our blade lengths are gonna get a little bit longer as we right. go from the five, the six, the four. Um, or if we're talking about offsets or we're talking about um, in individually kind of making an iron within a set. Mm -hmm. Well, now we're basically saying, what's the benefit in the scoring irons, something like a, bru a blueprint T would be a lot easier to maneuver through the turf. All right, so it's, it, it might have um, really good spin, it might have a little bit higher launch, but that's what we need as we talk about scoring irons. Getting into the middle side of it, we, we talk about the blueprint S. Mm -hmm. And so we get the weight put more around perimeter, and what it allows us to do is maybe get a little bit more forgiveness in, in some of the middle irons, and then you go into the longer irons, and you're going into the I-230s, where there's a much deeper cavity or pocket to it. And again, the weight has been put much more around the yep. perimeter. And so you, you take three separate lineups. You can have all Blueprint Ts, Ss, or I-230s. And or you can mix and match between them because the design style has remained the same through the sets. So the lofting remains yep. consistent with it. The look remains consistent, the blade lengths, um, the material they're using in, in the, the T and the S is forged. Kind of a departure. There's not a lot of forged material that comes from Ping. Right. It's not that they don't want to do it. It's that it needs to be done with a purpose. And so that's Ping's engineering on it. They're not just going to put something out over and over and over again. And we've seen that recently. The classic true blade. There are very, very few cl classic blades that are, that are just nice and smooth all the way around. Mm -hmm. We got the blueprint a few years ago. Even the eye blade, quote unquote, with the blade in the name, was a cavity back. Right, yeah. And so this also kind of embarks Ping into the, the m more traditional blade look. Mm -hmm. So that now they're having clubs that are, one, they're forged, two, they're also very slim. Um, and progressive sets are huge. We see it with every company that they're, they're specifically trying to make a set progressive to give you the benefits in the scoring clubs all the way through the longer irons for more mm -hmm. forgiveness. Yeah, I think, uh, and you're seeing, I mean, you go on, you watch golf on the weekends, on, mm -hmm. on tour, whatever tour it might be, and a vast majority of those players are gonna have one, or excuse me, more than one, two, three, maybe yeah. even four different irons in their bag. And that's not yet the case yet for amateur players. Most amateur right. players just have one set. Um, which is a, which is the popular thing and has been yeah. for a while, but I think you're seeing in fittings the 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 benefits of having multiple types. And like you said, and when you have a long iron in your bag or in your hand, 
for a shot. You're looking for forgiveness. You want to make sure that mm -hmm. ball gets up near the green somewhere, potentially on it. You're not trying to work the ball very often with that club. You just want to hit the ball near the target. Yep. Whereas with a nine iron, maybe even an eight iron, you know, you're, you might be trying to be more precise, more accurate, control that flight a little yeah. bit more. Um, and to see Ping come out with the Blueprint S, Blueprint T, I think uh, a lot of the really skilled players are going to be very interested in, in that as a potential combo set. I think. Yeah. It, one of the major companies that we get to work with, or where we get to do testing with is, as well, said that 80% of their PGA Tour players have in their iron, 80% uh, of them have a mixed bag of irons. Mm -hmm. So there's more than one model. Yeah, that makes sense in between based on them. what I see on TV. You know? Yeah, and so I, I think that holds true for almost every uh, tour player out mm -hmm. there. There's a small percentage still where they may just have blades and that's all they have. Yeah. They may have just a, a model line to that. But uh, that's where we just try to, even in our fittings, we try to get more specific. It's not just, all right, well, we've got your pitching wedge and your seven iron and we'll go to, you know, wait a minute, what about this five? Do we need to do something different? Right. And um, I think that's where Ping has got a really, really robust lineup because now we're talking about a lot of different individual clubs that could be used in different, different places there mm -hmm. too. Not just what they kind of have as these three clubs that blend well, but they blend very well. The look is amazing. If you're someone that does like a classic look, it is a very thin, mm -hmm. thin look. Unlike the T iron, the S iron has got a very thin look, but it's just, it's beefy behind it yet yeah. too. They're really super soft. We saw the I-230 as one of the most popular irons in our fittings. Um, also, absolutely kind of started to change a little bit of the game for people because of the spin, yep. the launch and spin. And if you're going to play and you're going to have success, you not only need to get that ball up, but you also have to have it come down and stop. Yep. And that combination is one across the market. Spin is a very tricky uh, situation. Yeah. It's usually, usually, but not always, what we are uh, working on in the fitting bay. Do I need more? Do I need less? Have you got what you need? Yep. And and now we can work with that yeah, too. Yeah, that's always, It's. I think there's, you know, depending on the player, a lot of them might be looking for distance and distance only, but I know that if you're trying to hit good shots that land on the green and stay on yep. the green, yep. spin is going to be the important part there. Um, and I think it's also worth noting, I'll say this on ping before we move on, is when they release a player's type iron model, it's typically a big deal because mm -hmm. over the years, those irons in that category from ping, they have lasted a really long time yeah. in that category. They don't make that update unless they feel like they can, and they feel, and right. unless they know that this next product is going to be that much better. I-210 was the go-to for them for yep. how long in that kind of player's cavity category, and it was, you know, it was awesome for a long time. It's, people still love it. Yeah. They didn't go to I-230 until they knew they could make it that much better. That's what's happened. And so with Blueprint S and Blueprint T, I have a very good feeling that people are going to love it. Uh, 2015 was the last time that Ping had made uh, a forged club that was a cavity back. It's called the Answer. Mm -hmm. So it was the forged club. All right, so that's that's a while ago. Yep. They also, I believe in 16, 2016, came out with the eye blade. And that was, we could call maybe semi-replaced with the I-230 last year. Yeah. We're, we're, so we're talking about four, five, six-year stretches. Right, which is rare for it is. these equipment companies It now. is. You know, um, two, two years for most companies is about what you see yep. in some of these where there's refinement with of the models. Irons, yep. um, but it also speaks to the longevity. These, oh, totally. Yeah. They don't engineer clubs for a year-by-year -year basis. Mm -hmm. They engineer for a longer period of time. Yep. They want their product to last, and yeah. and they do. Yeah, and I mean, if there's, you know, if there's another release in in a couple of years from Ping in this category, I'd be very surprised. They, I would too. They, there's a reason that they go years and years. Yeah, you know, between. So, yep. um, all right, more iron talk here. We mm -hmm. got Mizuno. So the yeah. Mizuno Pro Series 2024. Um, I think there's this reputation out there from Mizuno with their grain flow forging process, you know, they got the softest irons feeling wise in, in golf. Um, obviously that's subjective to some degree, but um, people love the Mizuno feel of irons. And so we get more of that this year with the, the Mizuno Pro 241 is the muscle back. Uh, the Mizuno Pro 243 is sort of their shallow cavity player's iron. And then the Mizuno Pro 245 hollow body 
um, but still has a really good look to it. So uh, first impressions on the Mizuno Pro 2024 series. Yeah, um, Mizuno has done what they've always done, and that is create something that looks amazing, feels out of this world soft, and is high performance. Mm -hmm. And the, the thing about Mizuno is for a long time, they've tried to create some of that progressive set we talked about, where they, yes, you can, you can blend some of this, you can a blend a blade and a little bit of a cavity back or mm -hmm. something a bit more beefy and bulky. What they've done now is basically made all of them progressive sets. Now, the, the blades, the 241s are blades. They're yep. just a classic and purest, yet high functioning blade. Uh, but the 243s, they've refined, they've made a little smaller than the prior model. They've made that progress uh, progression a little bit different. Yeah. They've, got, they've, they've figured out that one, they got to make the face even thinner. With, so this is the thinnest forged face on the market. Um, they, what they do is, is in the heating process, when they get it heated, they immediately quench the face with uh, uh, water what that does is it hardens that face. So it's still the forged material. We talk about grain flow forging, but when it hardens that face and makes it even harder, that, that allows for more ball speed. Mm -hmm. And so you've seen what they've done is actually had to take the solid forgings um, out of 1025E carbon steel, the gap wedge, the pitch, the nine and the eight, they've actually had to make those slightly lower lofted. So they've taken a little bit of loft to kind of catch them up with the 7654 that that they have in the set because they were that hot. Yeah. So we do see a little bit of a lofting difference um, from the traditional blade. Yeah. So you go from like a 34 degree in a seven iron yep. to a 32 degree, but um, they've also moved some of the uh, the lower irons to account for that. Yeah. We've also seen a little bit more spin. So one thing yes. I, uh, I was going to comment on that too in our testing. Yeah, we saw the, the 243. The, the, two, the 2024 series spun I think it was noticeably more yeah. than the previous series, which I think is a good thing. I think it's there's, huge. there's enough golfers out there that need more spin at their yeah. irons. And you mentioned the the loft part it might be in, in some models, maybe a little stronger lofted compared to maybe the previous generation. Mm -hmm. But if they're spinning enough or spinning more, then there's that doesn't really matter about the loft. You know? Right. And if you get enough spin, that's exactly what you need. Um, then these irons are going to give that for you. So. Um, I mean, the, I think it's really good job by Mizuno with these, oh, yeah. these and, irons. And the the two um, the two forty fives yeah is also been they they have also been redesigned slightly but they're they're giving us kind of that that let's say bulked up package mm -hmm. that doesn't look bulked up right they're a little thicker they have a little thicker top line but they're still using um, forgings um, in body in the body and some of the faces they're still using tungsten weighting. They're really individualizing the trajectories that they're trying to get off of each of their irons. And so for someone that may lack a little bit in the distance side, still wants to play something that looks that way, feels that way, the uh, 245s are amazing. Mm -hmm. And that's the one introduction that Mizuno made years ago, um, I think three models ago now, that they they wanted kind of this hollow blade design. Yeah, it's like the HMB, I think, the yeah. MP20. Yep, yep, exactly. And so that that really kind of kicked them into another gear with that type of iron. And we've seen that iron also out of a lot of other manufacturers, right? So we see it out of Ping and Titleist and mm -hmm. TaylorMade and Callaway. So we, we have those on the market. But the, the unique thing about Mizuno, first and foremost, is that their, their precision to engineering these clubs is second to none with their forgings. Yep. Like so, the way they make these clubs are so high level, um, but they've given us now a look. If you go to their website, you can look at some of the videos. They've given us a peek inside how they do it, kind of that first of inside the factories, inside the forging houses, individual pieces. But they, they uh, many many years ago, they had a copper layer that was underneath yep. the chrome layer. And that went away in the mid uh, teens, so about 2000 and say maybe 13, 14, 15, 16, somewhere in there. They went away from that. And I don't know why, but they did. And they, they brought it back. But they brought it back. And yep. as soon as they brought it back, it absolutely felt like the Mizuno again. Mm -hmm. One of their taglines, of course, nothing feels like a Mizuno. Yep. That has a huge, um, a huge e impact on the sound and then in the feel 
I know in discussing this with with Mizuno officials, like they were talking is like they go to the range with blank clubs and say, "Would you hit these two clubs?" And um, they're on the PGA Tour, and they they will anyone who don't care what you hit, just would you please just hit these two? Which would you prefer? A hundred percent with a copper underlay. They don't know what's underneath. Yeah. They, they have no idea. It's blind testing. It is just absolute yep. blind testing. And so that feel also translates to feedback. And one of the things about those types of clubs is feedback. You're, you, you play a blade because you like the look, yes. But you also have a feedback. Like, mm-hmm. oh, that was on the toe, the heel. Yeah. What you kind of lose a little bit as the club gets bigger and more perimeter right. weighting is you lose a little bit of that feedback. Um, mm-hmm. That's not a good or a bad thing unless you really, really desire the feedback. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's a that's a great point that I think, and it, it does play to the the demographic that the irons are designed for. You know, I think, yep. uh, you know, someone that's a, a, a twenty handicap is relatively new or might be just kind of a, a weekend warrior, so to speak, isn't maybe needing that that feedback from an iron. But someone that's really on a journey to get better yep. or the handicap, you know, these things, um, that part could be very valuable. So. Um, all right, let's move on here back. We're going to go to kind of back to the dry, well, the metals department here a little yeah. bit. Um, we'll go to TaylorMade. Yep. And uh, we talked a little bit about 10K MOI earlier. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I'd be fascinated to know <laughs> the the conversations that might have been had by one, you know, marketing department or the other when they saw, you know, the other company come out with Put a 10 on th- it. This 10, yeah, this 10K, yeah. you know, uh, marketing ploy, so to speak. But so TaylorMade, TY10. Um, I guess uh, you know their their sort of tagline is you know see your shots or see your tee shots in 10k. Um, yeah. And so uh, I guess what are your first impressions on the TaylorMade QI10 series? Well, the f- the first impression is uh, is really the look. Yeah. Which I think is way better than yeah. in the past couple of years. They've they've changed that. There's some awesome technology. Let's call it under the hood or let's call it under the crown. Yeah. Um, but let's start with the crown. TaylorMade has three different lineup or three di- distinct models in their lineup. Mm-hmm. Um, the QI10 Max is the 10K, as you were talking about. It was referred to like the pin. Yep. All right. So they were again on the quest for inertia over 10,000K to produce something that was longer and straighter. Um, I was also going to mention this is about we talk about ping real quick, but when we talk about tour adoption, these drivers are on tour. Yeah. The these drivers, although Yes, we're targeting the, call it the commercial base, is yeah. we're targeting the golfers that would like to go out and play, whether it's recreational, some competitiveness, but not tour level, right? You're not on the tour. These drivers are still being used out there too because the tour players are seeing the benefit. And so as an example, like Morikawa is already using this uh, uh, Max driver, the mm-hmm. QI-10 Max. Uh, we saw um, recent wins, right? Uh, we saw Rory has already won with it. Yep. We saw um, Tommy Fleetwood just win with it. Um, it wouldn't, even by the time we hit three weeks out um, and the uh, PGA Tour is back on um, on the mainland. Yeah. Right. We, we, we might even see another win or two out of this thing. Oh, yeah. And what they've done is is with all of the models, they've kind of differentiated by starting with the crown. The crown is a complete cover crown. So it's actually kind of a wrap around it. It dives down over the front edge, around the sides. Like um, what that allowed them to do is it saved a lot of weight. And that's where the weight gets dis- redistributed. And so now you can start talking about more more mass in the back, lower. Yeah. That That's MOI. where, yeah, yeah. MOI. Yeah. Um, so that was a huge piece of the puzzle for them, right? They're, the Max 10 is, uh, or the uh, um, QI 10 Max is a very big footprint. Yeah. And they're trying to maximize that size because the bigger it gets, right, the farther away you can get the weight for stability. And that, that remember, that stability is both up and down as well as side to side. So that's a huge part of, of what they're doing. Also, it, it goes into the, what I talk about aerodynamics. So the as the, the wind or the turbulence is kind of hitting that face, it's not catching up on something. It doesn't have to go over things. It can, it can wrap right over the top of mm-hmm. this skirt all the way around it. When we take a look at, we say movable weight, um, I mentioned that a little bit with Ping, and this also comes up with the, the new QI10 Mac or um, LS. So they have a movable weight up front. 
but you'll notice we can only see about half the weight. Yep. And the idea there is that if we've had these tracks, and a lot of these companies have these tracks, those tracks take a lot of the uh, resistance. They, oh, yeah. Aerodynamically, that's not great, whether it's on the back or you know up in the front or in the middle. So what they've done is kind of covered half of it up and allowed you to slide the weight in if you needed the, the weight changing for uh, uh, shot shaping. They, they've allowed you to move the weight underneath and mm -hmm. kind of conceal it. Yep. Um, I think there will be a point soon enough where the whole thing is concealed and you might have the smallest of tracks yeah. that, that just slides back it's and forth too. It's actually a large weight that yeah. is just concealed under the, the surface of the club, I guess. Yeah. It seems like they almost kind of started some of that because the, the Stealth 2 Plus Ferry one last year, um, yeah. it's got that giant 50 gram weight. But there was there, it, there's something, you, you slide it almost underneath yeah. part of the club there if yep. you wanted it forward, right? You could, you could barely almost see the weight itself. Correct. Seems like they maybe picked something up from that. And the, the, the weight is still there in the QI-10 uh, Tour Ferry Wood. Yeah. You still have that sliding weight. Um, but to your point, I think there's some aerodynamics going on there where they're trying to you know, mitigate the, I guess, the, the canyons that are on the sole of the club because yep. TaylorMade's had some pretty big, you know, sliding weight tracks in the past with some of their, their models. You know, oh, you go yeah. back to M3 and M5. Right. And you had those things all over the place. Right. You move those weights all over there. And so um, there's something, yeah, clearly, I mean, you look at that QI-10, the LS, and it's like, you know, it's a very small track now. Mm -hmm. um, so that's probably a, a good point to make for those tinkerers out there that might be listening or watching this is, is there's the movable weights work, but yep. they really work the best if that's the aerodynamics of the driver header stayed Correct. So, the other thing, um, what they've done, and they had, they had uh, durability issues. The Stealth and the Stealth yes, Two had had issues, mm -hmm. and they basically have created kind of a cup on the face that is more of a, a, a ring that allows, and it's also a little bit softer, that allows for a little bit more of the face to flex. Mm -hmm. And so, what they had prior to that was a very rigid. And hard yeah, it was material. Yeah, very firm at the outside of it. Yeah, and and the impact on that created the vibrations that would even just kind of break down the the glue and the adhesives that they were trying to keep the face on with. Yeah. And so you didn't see a lot of faces actually crack. You just see them pop off. Um, so they are continuing with the carbon, the sixty time um, carbon layer. Yep. As a face, again, they've gone to that to to help reduce weight savings, but also to make very specific uh, face uh, formations, mm -hmm. right? They, they want to be very uh, specific in what's thicker, what's thinner, where it is, yep. how it, it, it's shaped and curved. Um, they're continuing on with twist face, which they engineered many years ago. Mm -hmm. um, so I think what we're seeing in terms of the durability, I don't think we'll have an issue with the durability as, like they had. Uh, we have three different models if we're looking for something spin-wise, if we're looking some maximum-wise, or if we're ta talking about someone in between. Um, I believe I believe Rory won with the QI-10. I think it was a standard. Yeah. I think it was just the QI-10. Mm -hmm. I, I could be wrong on that one, but I, I know Tommy Fleetwood won with or the least At least the, the Ferrywood, for sure, Rory was, was a standard. Um, yeah. I'm not sure about the driver, but yeah. Um, yeah, so that's interesting, though, like, to your point about the... I guess the max drivers, you know, mm -hmm. we've seen a lot more of those in play on tour because the benefits are there for everybody, you know. So yep. um, one thing I wanted to add, Taylor made QI irons. I thought it was, it's interesting I saw in sort of the the materials we got from TaylorMade on the irons. Yeah. The, they are designed with um, sort of a face, you know, the face design is eliminating cut spin. I thought yep. that was interesting. Yep. Um, I haven't done enough testing on it myself. I don't know if you've seen anything in fittings that, you know, uh, I guess supports that or is um, you know uh, kind of signifies that. But well, I cer um, certainly in very fitting, interesting in fittings. We do notice that the longer the iron gets, t the tendency is for the shot shape to be more right. Yeah. So that th they are addressing what everyone has to address um, from a longer iron perspective, right? If you take seven iron on down, generally speaking, even a toe shot will remain somewhat straight. Mm -hmm. Um, it does have to do with the dynamics, dynamics of the club, so how long the club gets, how high the toe is, um, and then where if the face is a lot thinner out on the toe, what that actually does to the spin. And so they are, there's two things that are really unique about the QI um, iron, the QI-10 iron. 
One is that this is not a, a one year life cycle for them. We found that they had had stealth for two, two years, years. Yep. and it was extremely successful and still one of the best irons that they've made in a long time. And it's also in the QI-10, a reformulated individual iron faces as well as individual iron weights so that specific lofts and weight is, is uh, styled. So it's like more of a ind individual, we're gonna build each of the irons that, that they work collectively. Yep. Um, we see that out of a lot of companies, but this is a, a, an even more fine-tuned version with the face thicknesses. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna start to see, I think we'll still also see this as a really huge iron on the market for game improvement because they are, they, they launch high, soft, um, that's also another version that they have. They actually have an HL yeah. for high and light. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily high launch, but it's just a um, the head is a lighter weight head. The shafts are lighter weight shafts. To create, uh, they have um, a couple more degrees of loft. To create the launch that we're seeking, because a lot of the stuff today in game improvement has really reduced a lot yep. of loft. It's kind so of we, low and piercing rollout yeah. type of thing. Yeah. Um, but you need that launch, you need that spin there too. Yeah, and so we're gonna see that, I think that will be a, um, a huge plus in the fitting world. Mm -hmm. um, I think TaylorMade, had, with the Stealth, had made a great iron that's very successful on the market and has worked well, really well for a lot of people. I think we're gonna continue to see that too. Sure. In that market. Sure. Um, all right, Callaway, AI Smoke. Yeah. Um, interesting, uh, I guess, naming convention there. Um, I guess I should say sticking with Paradigm, Callaway Paradigm AI Smoke. Um, you know, my first impression there was, you know, they they have this very clear message on um, the way that AI has helped them design the face structures, right? There's mm -hmm. a new, it's kind of the smart face with, with yep. each model in the series, go from driver down to irons. Um, in the initial testing we did, you know, we, we noticed it for sure. We especially noticed it with the irons. Like if it was a, a low face miss hit, I mean, yeah. you, you barely lost any distance at all right. um, with those two iron models. So um, your first impression on Callaway Paradigm AI Smoke. Luckily enough, I had gotten to hit and play um, with the driver. I, I got to play the triple diamond. And I found the faster I swing, the straighter it would go. That is uh, not... Typically, no. go, at least not for me. <laughs> no, and it was it was interesting. It's like they they they've really worked well. Callaway has done a great job over the years about creating ball speed on miss hits, mm -hmm. and so this isn't um, this isn't groundbreaking information. If you swing faster, you can get the ball to go faster. Right. But the, but the trick to this, as I mentioned very early on, is there's a difference between getting the ball to go farther and the ball to go straighter. And yep. that, that's where all of the companies are trying to combine these things. They've come out with called um, face deflections or they've, the AI has computer generated a face with small spots on that face mm -hmm. that allow for more ball speed even on a miss hit. You're right. I, I think and it's unique for each club. So like it each is. driver yeah. model has a different face structure. Yep. Each fairy wood has a different one and so forth between each model in the set because those clubs are engineered for different types of players. Exactly. So, and that's, you know, that was the big thing for them is in the past, they've kind of done robot testing mm -hmm. to find this out. You know, the robot testing consists typically, you know, you, you set up the robot to hit shots off this far off the high toe or yep. this far towards the toe down in the heel. And then the, the same robot just hits the same swing. Yep. Now they've got a bunch of real player data as yep. well. And so that helped them, and AI used all that data to come up with these designs. Um, it's a cool story that I think, yeah. you know, and, and at least in our testing, we saw it right away. I was very impressed with the irons. I mean, that was the big one that yep. uh, myself and, and Kevin on our, in our testing when he was in town, the irons were the big, obviously it, it showed up in all the models, but for right. sure the irons, it was kind of crazy actually. I mean, he was, Kevin was carrying his best shots, the, uh, uh, the AI smoke iron, you know, 178, 179, I think he got a couple at 180, and then he hit one and he's got hot, oh, it's way thin, you know. Go up there, 175 yards carry. And it was right. like, oh, okay, well, I missed hit this iron, you're gonna lose a couple yards. <laughs> yep, exactly. Well, and I think the, when it comes to the woods, we have to look at this in a long line, right? So if you look at it 
in TaylorMade, what did they have um, a few years ago? They created the Stealth with a carbon face. Mm -hmm. Still have carbon face. They're, they're continuing on that line. We saw with uh, Callaway is the same sort of idea, right? Is they had come out with way back when the Epic, and that was the jailbreak. Mm -hmm. And they had advanced the jailbreak as they're creating new iterations and they're finding new things along the way. And so that the same is true in this new version of the paradigm, the AI smoke. Um, they're they're fine tuning what they found out in the last one, which was great. You know, the paradigm probably was Oh, it was awesome. Probably the the best in maybe three years. Yeah. Two or three years for sure. And so it got complete adoption and into the bags of every single Callaway player immediately. Yep. And so I but I I don't think that the smoke is in any way, shape, or form worse. Uh, the question becomes like how much better can you get? You know, mm -hmm. I think the the woods are going to be great because they've got a refinement. If you had, if you got a Callaway from a couple years ago, it's time to get into a new Callaway. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, without a doubt. Yeah. And when it comes to the irons, one of the things that that Callaway kind of missed on last year was they had the Paradigm iron, which was a seven iron at what twenty seven degrees. It's pretty strong. Maybe twenty seven and a half yeah. degrees. It's like that really only fit a very small section of people. And so what they decided is to come back on that and, all right, let's make a couple different versions of this. So, yes, there's a similar version in the AI Smoke um, Paradigm Iron, but there's also now the High Launch. Yep. There's also the Max Fast, yep. which is a much lighter weight version as well. So I think they, they made a, a great effort in kind of getting back to doing what they do. Callaway has traditionally been in the long in the long haul one of the best irons ever. They've they've almost always produced a lot of great irons, mm -hmm. and I don't know that last year was their best ever. It certainly wasn't bad in any way, shape, or form. They were great. They just fit a lot smaller niche. Sure. So sure. Yeah. And I think I mean I, again I was wildly impressed with the irons right away. So yeah. I'm I think that's going to be a big one for for Callaway um, in 2024. Yeah. Um, all right, well, we'll wrap things up here. We got Cobra to talk about. Mm -hmm. um, so Cobra Dark Speed Series. Um, this is my favorite driver of the year, and I say that as someone who really prefers a clean matte black driver crown. And yeah. so that's pretty much the main reason why I like the Dark Speed Series. Um, but your first impressions on Cobra Dark Speed, they went, so they have the X, which is sort of the standard model, yes. and the Max, and the LS, and the Drivers yes. and Fairways. Well, let's start with the LS. One thing that Cobra has done um, over many number of years now is generally produced a driver that has very low spin. They got on to figuring out about where they want to put that weight to kind of create a, a, a zero drop effect and, and get that ball mm -hmm. to launch higher without spin. Um, they have continued on with that. And one of the neat features is like they, instead of having kind of two weights, they now have three that are movable. So there's a little bit more positioning. You can move a weight all the way to the back to create a little bit more forgiveness. You can also move it inside, up up in the front, maybe more toe, more heel. So you could maybe produce a little bit more um, directional help for that. So if you're someone that really needs to reduce spin, that's a super great option. Also looks a little smaller. They're all 460 cc's, but the footprint is a taller face and a little bit more of a rounded and smaller shape. Mm -hmm. So when you look at it, it's it's not it's their smallest looking shape, but they're all the same size. The X, the X kind of takes that and expands that shape, draws that out. You now have a weight that you can put up forward or back. So now you can take that kind of middle of the road, if you will, in in um, in where you're you're hitting it generally straight already. Now we can really work a little bit more on your launch conditions with that weight moving forward yep. versus back and still get a fair amount of spin. And then the X, where you can put the weight into the heel or into the back, and you can really help do some shot. Like, we, we talk about it as just, anytime we reduce the, the dispersion, anytime we bring it closer, whether it's a little off to the right or a little off to the yeah. left, as we bring it closer, we're, we're, we're defining um, our shots better. And that's what we're trying to do with it. The look is really sleek, mm -hmm. the feel, 
is soft, it's muted, it's not, not generally tinny. Um, they continue to use the carbon fiber like a lot of these companies yep. have to redefine where they put weight, how they do it. They have this new power bridge, or uh, I think it's called the speed bridge, um, mm -hmm. where they're really looking at trying to kind of harness the, the casing yep. around the outside, but do that with um, like a connection piece from the it's face. It's a little face. bit like, like jailbreak initially. Yeah, you know, a little. And how it kind of, it connects to various parts of the club head right. in sort of a, in a stabilizing manner um, yeah. while also making sure there's the energy delivered to the golf ball. It's, it's similar, not the same, but it's... Yeah, the, it, it definitely has that effect because it's on the bottom of the club, but yeah. it's in the inside and it's kind of suspended a little is they used to have it on the on the sole in the prior model to this, yeah. the uh, Aerojet, and now it's up and it's right, suspended yeah. a bit, and that, that kind of creates um, a lighter structure, but mm -hmm. it also creates a more stabilizing structure to it. I think Cobra tends to be one that's left out because yeah. we we don't see a lot of Cobra um, in um, on the PGA Tour. Mm -hmm. We don't see a whole lot of it when we get into maybe, or even the LPGA Tour or the European, um, there's not a lot of it out there, right? Um, but there, that could be said of a lot of these other companies that win majors every year. There's yeah. there are plenty of companies out there that are making phenomenal equipment. Yeah, and we don't, you know, we just don't see them. Yeah, I think where you with the with I think it's just important to pay attention to the the clubs in play for players not under contract. Mm -hmm. um, I know there's it seems like there's not that many of them out there, but that always tells a story to me. I remember last year, like Justin Rose was an example mm -hmm. um, where he, switched, not under contract, he switched, switched to a bunch of different things. He, he switched he, irons. Yep. What, Wednesday at Pebble Beach? Yep. I think it was Pebble Beach. I think, it, yeah, he won. And it was, and he, he, won. Had the, he had the Cobras, right? It yeah. Was the, uh, he went to a whole, yep. he hit, he, he goes to a whole new company, puts, puts irons into his bag on Wednesday, and then plays Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and wins the tournament. Wins the tournament. And now, yeah, and so and he and he toy. I mean, he tinkered with different drivers. I think mm -hmm. he played the Cobra driver a little bit last year. Yep. Um, so like that's where I always pay attention to in terms of trying to evaluate maybe which ones are, which products out there are, are making their mark, so yeah. to speak. Um, so I'm excited for Dark Speed, and I, I saw. I thought it was funny. I saw a comment on one of our YouTube videos for these. Um, Cobra has historically been pretty colorful in their uh, club designs yeah. over the years. And someone said, uh, they said, I think Cobra ran out of color. <laughs> because it's yeah. true, like they've, they've used every color in the yeah, color wheel have. at some point, you know? They have. And so now that now they're just gonna go straight dark speed. And well, yeah, and even the irons are just uh, kind of like a charcoal color. Yeah, it is. They kind of, it's a different finish, but I like it. It's, yeah. it's kind of, it's unique, it's yeah. good. I think it's, it's not that shiny chrome, it's not that even satin chrome, it's like right. a different, um, I don't even know what, what they called it, but it's it's unique and I think it calls attention to it, which well, is and a good I think thing. One, one of the things we have to realize is where is the benefit in a fitting lie? And the benefit of a fitting is to be able to sit down with one of our custom fitters and go through these options, right? It's not just the club head, because that could be part of it, right? It might be the shaft, mm -hmm. it might be the length, it might be the weights. Um, I, as a fitter, I put clubs in people's hands. They said, never would have thought of it, didn't think of it, and they walk out purchasing that club because it, it hits the mark as to what we want out of a club. And if you're a TaylorMade guy, great. TaylorMade's got some super product for you. If you're a, a ping guy or gal, they've got great product mm -hmm. for you. Um, I, had, I did have a customer who was a very one manufacturer only, I'll let that go, but to tell you, we got into another manufacturer in the irons, and it wasn't even close. Yeah. And never even thought of it. Did It came in, said, well, I really don't know, because I've always just played this company, and I'm kind of thinking the new stuff in this company. We hit it, and then we hit something else. And it's one of the new ones on the market, and it absolutely was in the bag immediately. Yeah. We ordered them. Yeah. Pre-ordered them. Yeah. That's that's the kind of cool thing about us being you know brand agnostic fitters is yeah we have all the options in the tour van we have all the club heads all the you know shafts we have the the means of putting together a, thousands of different combinations yep. for you and um, you get to test them and ultimately it's your choice as to what you think is best whether you're a feel person whether you're a yeah data and performance person um, 
that's the cool thing. And now we have all these new toys in there to play with. Yep. It's, uh, January, February is always a very exciting time for us in the fitting bays. It is. We Right now, we haven't gotten to the PGA show. Mm -hmm. We're just coming up on it. Yep. And we have all this this equipment that's already in our bays, being hit, being fit. And what's really interesting is like I think COVID kind of changed that whole dynamic. We'd see maybe in December we'd see a, a small, tiny little teaser picture of the bottom of a club. Yep. And then all of a sudden we get into January and we might see one other piece. We didn't get to see any of this stuff until we got to the PGA show which is near the end of January down in, in Orlando. Now it's all out. Mm -hmm. There's still, there's still going to be a bunch of stuff that we're going to be talking about. We haven't talked putters yet, so there's a whole host of putters. We are normal. Um, normally we see something out of Scotty Cameron that's a huge thing. Callaway has already introduced their, mm -hmm. their lineups. We, we've already seen some of them. Uh, the AI-1 is out on the market. Um, the AI-milled is all on the market. Those are all out. We're going to see some new stuff. Uh, we talk about uh, the popularity of the Jailbird last year yep. um, by, by Odyssey. They've got a new version of that coming out. They have some broomstick. Uh, they have a, a, a bunch of different stuff that they still haven't yeah. released. Um, we are starting to see uh, what I saw. Even Roll just leaked some of their new stuff uh, for today. Um, the, the big thing with putters is again we're going to go into what makes it different from what you've already got right great conversation um we we obviously have a couple of experts leading experts in the field between mike viviano and larry bobka oh yeah right uh we haven't seen or really talked much about golf ball i've gotten a chance to play the new callaway golf ball it is outrageously good i mean it is above and beyond some of the golf balls i've ever played bridgestone's got a whole new lineup we're going to see a couple more from Titleist. Um, we, we've got TaylorMade. Uh, I had it in my hand. I didn't get to, to hit it yet. The, the new TaylorMade lineup is, again, way better than the, what they've had in the past. So golf balls is a huge conversation piece. And we don't really know yet what's going to be there in terms of shafts. People love to talk about yeah. shafts. Um, there's nothing new, per se, that's come out with any of these drivers of these woods just yet. So is there something waiting in the wings? I don't know. Like yeah. we haven't heard that. That's one we haven't heard anything about. Yeah. Yeah. So it's uh, it's fascinating though. I mean, there's so many different, I guess, uh, you know, sections, areas of this golf equipment thing. Mm -hmm. And every year there's there's improvements, advancements. Yes. Um, that I know you have a lot of fun with in the fitting bays, working yeah. with golfers, and um, it's got to be cool to see those results happen and how things can improve your. I mean, yeah, I'm sure you got customers that you've worked with for years, and they get fit for a driver. And yeah. 2021 and now it's yep. 2024 they're probably going to come back and they're going to see the improvements right away with whatever model they end up choosing so yep. um tyler thank you for joining uh this was uh you know this was a fun conversation to have looking at all of the uh, advancements in technology and stuff um i'm very excited to see what happens all the rest of 2024 and i know Likewise. you are too oh very much thanks thanks for having me